All right, here we are. This is super crazy exciting. These next two videos will finish up the book of Genesis. So this is His Word Unveiled. Today we are going to hit Genesis chapter 48. This is talking about Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. I am not going to waste any more time. So Genesis chapter 48, um, go for it, read it, we're good. Where we're at in, in the book is Joseph is still second in command right under Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. His family is now living in Goshen, growing um, in number and strength and in power, might, um, all of those things. The famine is still, still happening. Um, they're doing well. Egypt is, is prospering. So both Egypt and the children of Israel living in the land of Egypt but in Goshen are both um, doing awesome. And we have Joseph who married Asenath and they had two boys, um, Ephraim and Manasseh. And this chapter will be specifically on those two sons. So go for it. Read Genesis chapter 48. Um, meet with the Lord. Let this time be special, um, authentic, real. Go do your thing um, and we'll get this thing started. Lord, thank you for... Um, Thank you for the way you lay out your word, for the way that everything flows, everything works, um, so much truth, so many stories, but how it all comes into one entirety, um, one story, one, one huge piece. Lord, thank you for all the details and all the little things within them that we can piece together that, that um, allows this story, you, who you are, your heart, to just come alive. Lord, thank you for the way that, that you speak to us and awaken us through your word, for the way that you move us and drive us into more blessing and more peace, more of an understanding of who you are um, and, and the ways that you desire to bless us. Lord, we are so excited for what you have today. We, we ask you to be right here with us, speaking and teaching us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 48. Let's do this. We have this one and the next video, and we will complete um, the book of Genesis. So here we go. Genesis chapter 48, verse 1. Now it came about after these things that Joseph was told, Behold, your father is sick. So Jacob, Joseph's father, is sick. He is about to die. So Joseph hears this. Um, it says, so he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. Now Manasseh is the older. So even according to how they speak that in scripture, um, he speaks Manasseh and Ephraim. And I bring that up for a specific reason, since I called this chapter Ephraim and Manasseh, but you'll see why. So Manasseh and Ephraim, he takes them to see his father before he passes away. Verse 2, when it was told to Jacob, behold, your son Joseph has come to you, Israel collected his strength and sat up in the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. That Luz, remember, was what it was previously called. And then Jacob, at the time Israel, called it Bethel, uh, meaning house of God. So he is bringing up, this is where God met me. And in verse four, it says, and he said to me, behold, I will make you fruitful and numerous, and I will make you a company of peoples and will give this land to your descendants after you for an everlasting possession. Now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are mine. So Jacob, Israel, Israel is saying, your sons, Ephraim and Manasseh are mine. Now remember, um, it even speaks in the beginning of this chapter, it says that he, Joseph, took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, always giving an acknowledgement, recognition to the oldest one, Manasseh, came out first. He is the firstborn, Manasseh and Ephraim. It says Joseph took his sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Even in verse 5, though, when, when Israel speaks of them, he says, your two sons are mine. They, they will be considered mine. And he says, Ephraim and Manasseh. So he speaks Ephraim before Manasseh. That is important. There is a reason why I keep bringing this up. So Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, as Reuben, Reuben and Simeon are mine. So Reuben and Simeon are his first two sons, Israel's. So he speaks 
Joseph is Jacob's son. Remember, he was his favorite. He was the one that he made that coat of many colors. But he is speaking to Joseph and saying, your two sons, they are mine. They will be just like my firstborn and my secondborn. They will be to me. Um, okay, and moving on in verse 6. But your offspring that have been born after them shall be yours. They shall be called by the names of their brothers in their inheritance. So Jacob, um, Israel, is speaking and saying that um, what rightfully is Manasseh's being the firstborn and then Ephraim, he is, what Israel is saying is those two boys are considered mine. Their kids will be considered yours. So the firstborn will be considered of having that, that first son inheritance for you or for them, according to you, your family, your kids. Okay. So then we see, we'll jump down to verse nine. Um, Israel's asking Joseph, he says, okay, who are these boys? Joseph brings them, who are these boys? In verse 9, it says, Joseph said to his father, they are my sons whom God has given me. So he said, bring them to me, please, that I may bless them. So Israel knows that he is about ready to die. No, he's not doing well. And he has Joseph bring his sons to him so that Israel may bless them. Um, verse 10. Now the eyes of Israel were so dim from age that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them close to him and he kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I have never, I never expected to see your face and behold, God has let me see your children as well. So such an intimate, a personal moment that he is experiencing as a grandfather, but claiming these grandchildren as his own. Now we see in verse 10, it says that his eyes were dim. So we think back to Israel's father, Jacob's father, Isaac, when Isaac's eyes were dim. And remember what jo Jacob did, how he took advantage of his father's eyes being dim in that moment. Remember, Jacob deceived through his, or by his mother's guidance, deceived his father into causing him to believe that he was Isaac so that he could get the birthright. So Jacob was deceiving his father so that he, the second born, not the first born, but that he would get this blessing. That he would that he would take that he would take this. He would deceitfully claim it as his. And now we see Jacob himself, Israel, his eyes going dim. He can hardly see. He's loving on these boys. Joseph brings them close. Loving on these boys. Then in verse 13 it says, Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left. So Joseph has Ephraim, the second born. Remember, Manasseh is the oldest. So Jacob takes Ephraim with his right hand, um, walking him towards Israel. That would mean that while he's walking Ephraim to Israel, then Israel's left hand would be on Ephraim. Now, back in these days, when you place your right hand, your right hand um, uh, pours out the blessing. When you speak in your right hand, you lay your right hand on that one, that, that signifies the firstborn, that signifies the blessing, the blessing, the, the main firstborn inherited rightful blessing. The right hand is huge. So it says that jo um, Joseph took them. He was being very careful, very intentional about how he brought the boys to Israel, knowing that Israel's eyes were dim. So Ephraim, he moves with his right hand, going towards Israel's left. And then it says Manasseh, still in verse 13, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right and brought them close to him. So um, Joseph is ready for you know, Israel to just reach out his hands and Israel's right hand would be on Manasseh, his left hand would be on Ephraim. Simple, you know, done deal, hands on, blessing spoken, um, all in order, all perfectly how it should be. Then we have in verse 14, it says, but Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on the head of Ephraim, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, crossing his hands, although Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he goes in to a blessing. It says he blessed Joseph. 
So he is speaking with his hands where they are to be in blessing, um, blessing his grandsons, who he has called as his own, and then speaking this blessing, um, blessing Joseph. Then after that short blessing in verse 17, it says, When Joseph saw that his father had laid his right hand on Ephraim's head, it displeased him, and he grasped his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Place your right hand on his head. Verse 19 says, But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also will become a people, and he also will be great. However, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. He blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will, will pronounce blessings, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. Thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. So this is so crazy, thinking of Jacob's position and deceiving his father. He deceived him so that the younger himself would receive this blessing, the firstborn's right to that blessing. He was the one deceiving into that. Now we see him in this position where he could be deceived, yet he took the initiative himself to bless the younger. He, um, he heard from the Lord speaking this, speaking this blessing, stating that the younger would be greater, um, that Ephraim would be greater than Manasseh. So instead of just laying his hands out, he literally crossed his hands and did his blessing um, in, in, that, in that way by blessing the younger, blessing Ephraim, saying that he would be greater and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. And we see that when they list out the tribe of Israel, um, all the tribes that we see Ephraim in those numbers in, in greatly, um, greatly increasing and, and being, um, bring above, above that, that number of Manasseh and increasing in that way. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's just crazy seeing that, like just an incredible personal connection of those two just powerful moments of blessing and, and in who to bless and blessing that younger above the older and, and knowing that God, the way that he blesses, the way that, um, you know, the way that he's seeing, the way that he knows who is ready and who will respond and who will be and, and, um, Man, just those moments of blessing, that's that's powerful. The way that Jacob was used after being the one of deception, um, being the one taking initiative to bless, bless the younger. So uh, crazy, that's so, so, that's so good. So yeah, then it says, thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. Um, verse 21 says, then Israel said to Joseph, behold, I'm about to die, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your father. So he is just speaking that, that God is going to be with him no matter what. And Joseph had no clue how much he and his family and, and the tribes of Israel will need to hear that and have that just rooted in their hearts that God is, um, that God is with them no matter what. So, okay, that is all I got for that chapter. Um, it was pretty simple, so interesting, good. We can always pull stuff out, just see the story, see the see everything just coming to be and, and coming together the way God draws it in and allows the, the entire story of the word to just um, make sense and picking out these pieces and that's so cool. And you never know what you're gonna read um, throughout the word that, that brings back these, these small moments that we're reading about and picking up on. So don't lose them. Like I always say, don't rush over, don't skip over, grab a hold of everything, um, choose to see God all over all of this. Um, all of it holds power, all of it's so good. That's all I got. Thank you for walking this out. We have, I believe our last video is the next one that you see and we're gonna squeeze in two chapters, the final two chapters of Genesis and we will finish up the entire book of Genesis. So please join me, walk that out with me and in celebrating just this last part of Genesis and celebrating this movement into Exodus. Um, crazy stuff going on, excited about it all. God's so good. He's faithful. Um, I will leave you with that. I'll see you soon.